Hello, welcome to another how to video. My name is Dave Davis, CTO of DVS, and guess what? This week I'm on annual leave. So, this video was filmed last week in preparation, so Jake will be very thankful this time instead of lastminute.com. Anyway, today we are going to take a look at the new 12 megapixel fisheye. So, we're going to put an SD card in there. Ta da! Um, new features. So it has, I've done a, a video on the fisheye previously, so it's got the smart features in there, which are the traffic flow, the direction, and the, the you know, the, the, the average uh, counting, as well as the standard heat map function, which you need an SD card to do. But this one also has the Imavision lens. So finally, we have it with an Imavision lens. What does that mean? Imavision are the world class leader in fish ID warping. We now have that technology on board. So when you de-warp it, it is a much cleaner image. It's a 1.29 mil lens, so it's a much deeper image, much clearer on the de-warp. So we're gonna de-warp it and show you the results. So stay with us two ticks. I'm just gonna go and put this on the ceiling and then we'll web browse into it, set it up and show you the de-warp. Okay, so I've uh, fitted the fish eye and I left it half an hour. So I'm now going to show you how the fisheye works. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is, I've web browsed into it. Uh, software tab is uh, live, so let me start the view. That would really help. Uh, Internet Explorer, high resolution images and running OBS on a Surface Pro isn't the best, but we're just about getting there, so apologies if it's a little bit jerky. So we fitted the fisheye, lovely wide view. This new 1.2 mil, 1.29 millimeter lens really does make a big difference with the Imavision. So well done guys uh, for teaming up with Imavision. Software tab allows us to live de-warp. So I web browse in, select the de-warp option. And you can see um, when I tilt this full up, you can see the ceiling tiles there. So the D-Warp is much better than it ever was on the previous models with this lens. Under the hardware tab, that's what we select when we want to add it to a recorder. So it's a ceiling mount and the main fisheye, but I could change it to fisheye plus three PTZ. It would reboot and then I can add it to an NVR. What I would say is if you do de-warp it and then add it to an NVR, you're going to get a six megapixel fisheye stream and three 1080p images on the PTZ. If you then have to go and de-warp the fisheye to get any evidence, you're de-warping six meg instead of 12 meg, so, me, instead of 12 megapixel. So the de-warp will be a much lower quality. So always advise. So a Dave DVS tip is always record it at 12 megapixel and then retrospectively de warp using IMS 4200 or the VS player standalone. It will give you a much better result. Okay, so moving along in configuration, uh, standard height vision web browser functions. So I'm not gonna go into detail on it. Um, other than that, I've added an SD card and we've um, uh, formatted that and left it for about an hour so we can put some data on there. But under heat map configuration, You enable heat map, then you draw your area, so it allows you to draw it, um, uh, funny shapes now. So I've done it like a circle to, to match the shape of the fisheye, so I capture all of my details there. But if there's an area you don't want to capture the um, fisheye details, you just uh, navigate around it. You then do your minimum and maximum object size. So if you don't want to count uh, over a certain size or below a certain size, that will negate that from, oh, that's a big word, negate that from the count to give you a much truer reflection of what you're looking to get a heat map analysis on. And then you start the val val validity, oh, oh, that word, validity, oh, fuck. that word of 45. Um, then you can adjust if it's getting false, um, false, data on there. Uploading data type is dual time and people number or just dual time. Uh, people number is not accurate people counting. Please don't assume it is. It gives you a rough estimate as to how many people are in a given area. Um, so it lets you see if your A to B testing in a store, for instance, is going really well and your sale pod is being well used. Your arm and schedule is 24 seven. Linkage method is notify surveillance center. So that's the enable heat map function. Um, really easy to set up and use. The next one is the intersection analysis. 
I got that right for starters. So I did do something right in school. So enable intersection analysis. I've drawn my red box here. So this is my uh, my analysis zone. I've moved my arrows as to where I want to, which way and where I want to see people coming in and out of the area. But again, you match that to the area and application type of, of, of your installation. So I've just done it. Um, anyone coming in and out with the areas in the main demo room floor and then your arming schedule and linkage method again. Save that. I'm not going to click save. If I click save or change any data on there, it will overwrite any historical data, which means we won't have anything to show you. So in application, you've got heat map statistics. I've only just fitted it. So it's daily report by dwell time. Yes. So that gives you your heat map statistics and you've got your color scheme of red is hot, blue is cold. So that the more movement that goes on in this, like so that the areas of higher activity will be shown in red and then the rest of it, background noise is blue. So you can see where I've walked around a bit between the, my seated area and the pod here to do something on this pod and where I was using the camera earlier to record some uh, footage. So you can see those areas where the, we have been uh, moving around. And then if you want, you can have it as data number format instead. Um, if you're really clever, you can understand that. You can export that and put it into your own system. What you have got then is by people number as well. Again, not people counting, but it tells you roughly the amount of people in a given area. So, oh, sorry, counting again. You can see the uh, highest of 10 people and lowest of zero people. You can see where I've been moving around. Jake and Mike came and joined me earlier. So we were sitting in that area. It's not, it's sort of around there. So where we had four of us in there, uh, moving around these areas. Um, if you had uh, 10 or more people, it'd be much darker red. And again, you can get that by uh, data and export that into your own third party system. So really handy, especially in the retail environment for doing A to B testing. Uh, if you need to know what that means, uh, go and look at up. Uh, Google will tell you. If you go into configuration, ah, sorry, we'll go into intersection analysis report. And this is where you get your flow from A, B, C, and D. So if you choose area A and count in, you can see the people went A in, A out, A in, B out, A in, C out. So you can see the way people are moving into an area and back out of an area, into an area and back out of an area. So you can start to see the path maps. Um, of where people are coming into your store or coming into an area and back out again. So you can sort of build up a much better idea of how people move through your store. Again, that's from A. So if we go B, you can see the areas there. And C, you can see where people are moving around. And then D. So you can see where that um, path, mapping, path mapping function really starts to build up a much better idea of where the people uh, start to move through your store, how, and then you can uh, help adjust your store layout accordingly um, or just change shopper habits, maybe by blocking a door off or um, implanting a chip in their head and telling them that they have to buy all the expensive products in area A. That's an easy way. Why wouldn't you do that thing? Anyway, so that's the uh, heat map and intersection analysis report. It was in the previous version, but we've now got the image vision lens, which gives it much better, de much better detail. So definitely enhances the product set. What we can show you quickly as well is it, the dewarp function in Hike Central. So I'm going to open the Hike Central client. I've updated to version 1.4. If you don't know much about Hike Central, I've done a separate how-to video on Hike Central. Please go and watch it. It's a really, really powerful VMS. Version 1.4 is even more powerful than any other version we've had. It really is um, started to keep up with the big boys. A lot, really powerful. Lots of bolt-in uh, licenses for different things. Go check it out. If you've got any questions, come and ask us at DVS. We're happy to support you on there. Um, and the monitoring and the 4K, we're going to choose our camera. So that's our fisheye. You can see it's a much wider, you can already see the ceiling tiles within the field of view. The older version would have been about here. So you're getting a good scope more within this. If I do D warp on it, and then if I move that like that, bold D warp, zoom in. And then we can manipulate the view so it's much easier on the eye, this bold D warp. And again, you can zoom in further and then manipulate that round any way you want. 
So you can see using the uh, the MS, the, the, the D warp is much enhanced compared to the old, and it's much easier on the eye compared to the old D warp. And then we can zoom all the way out. Um, and again, however you like the D warp, that you can. So that's called Bowl D warp. Go and check it out. Again, it's available within Hike Central Client. I'm going to stop that. And we also have intersection analysis um, with the people analysis. We have got Q analysis, heat map, and pathway analysis. So if we choose a camera, uh, I can't remember what one it is on though. I need to go and set it all that up. Heat map analysis, add a camera, 4K NDR. Uh, that one there, close. Daily report, generate report. There we go. We can get it in that in that report through Hike Central as well. So it's a similar thing, and or you can get it in graph type. Uh, I prefer that method. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, thank you so much for taking all the time to do that. It's much appreciated. Uh, we try to answer all the inquiries as they come in. Again, I'm off on my holidays next week, so I shall see you on the week after or on my return. Lots more videos, lots more content, and some fun prizes and giveaways. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you.